Hello and welcome to another tutorial in Applied Energistics 2. In the previous episode for AE2 I covered resources and crystal growing and I talked briefly about the power system in AE2. So I take for granted that all those things are clear because I won't cover them at all in this tutorial. In this tutorial I will talk about the ME network with every step from finding stuff that you need to getting a functional ME network storage system and I will have focus on storage in this tutorial. So let's get started over here. It all starts with a hunt for a meteorite and to do that you need the meteorite compass and this will show the way to the closest meteorite from where you are. And let me fly away and I will meet you when I get there. When you get closer, the meteorite compass will very clearly show you when you are, has, have a ride. It will start to spin when you're in the correct position. But a trick to know exactly where it is, is to use F9. This will show you the shank borders and the compass will show you in the direction of the shank with the meteorite. So as you can see here, I move around the two shanks, but when I'm within this shank, it will spin and this one. So that tells us that somewhere below me down here, in the border between these two, but not, not outside in this direction, we should have a meteorite. So let's dig down. Okay, so I had to search around quite a bit for it, but finally I found what we were looking for, the sky stone. And here within the sky stone we can find the sky stone chest. It's quite tricky to see but you will find it and this stuff is hard to break even with a diamond pick it takes quite a few hits not as bad as obsidian but still and the chest is even harder but within the chest we will find these inscriber presses so here I found calculation and silicon press. These are random and this means that you will probably need to find quite a few meteorites before you have all four presses that you will need to get started with ME networks. So let's get back to where I came from and I'll meet you there. Okay, so now I'm back in the compound. Now when we have found a few presses, it's time to get started to build an in inscriber. Easy to build and you have your inscriber. This inscriber, inscriber will require 10 AE per tick, so you can use a vibration chamber as we discussed in the last video and in here we use our presses to make all these items that we'll need. I'll get there in a second. These are the four that we need, will need. Inscriber calculation press, the logic one, engineering and silicon. And silicon are, we can do make it by grinding quartz to dust and just cook it. This will give us the silicon that we need. And it's in uh, in AE2. This is only used, at least so far at the time of this video recording, it's only used to make printed silicon. And to make that you will need the, the silicon press of course. Easy to make, place your silicon 
in the inscriber you can see it in here and when it's finished you have the printed silicon and this process is the same for all the other ones as well the engineering circuit is made from the engineering press with a diamond the calculation circuit is made from circus quartz and the logic is made from gold so these are the circuits and the silicon that we will need in the next step so now we have printed silicon engineering circuit calculation circuit and logic circuit and all these are connected to this creative energy cell as you can see and as one as as long as one is connected to the next one they will both have power from this one the next step when you have all the circuits both silicon and the and the other ones the circuits you combine them with redstone so let me take these three and now we can make processors so logic processor calculation processor and engineering processor they are all made in the same way but now we don't need the precious presses anymore they are only used in this step so combined a uh, one piece of printed silicon to a logic circuit one piece of redstone and same thing here with the calculation and the engineering and this will give us logic processor calculation processor and engineering processor so this is the same step regardless of what you're making but you will need all four presses to make all the items that you will need so it's just find them and now we can get started now we can really build our first me chest and let's me just craft what we need one piece of illuminated panel i will get three but we only need one formation core here we have the processor annihilation core very similar now we can make an me terminal so combine what we just crafted now we have the me terminal and the me chest and i need the terminal for that yeah now we have an me chest but we can't do much with it as you can see here we have nothing in it and if I try to open the chest I can't read the storage cell and that's because I have no storage cell in it so to make a storage cell we the we can start with the crafting the storage component here is a processor once again and now we can make the most basic storage cell and that's the 1k me storage cell now we can put this storage cell in the me chest and we the chest is ready but we can't reach it since we have no power so you can see everything is grayed out and i can't put the things in it So let me dismantle that and connect it over here to the to the ME network and now we can see we can put things in it so all the things that we didn't don't need we can put in it and basically you can search well you can search for items and you can sync it with NEI as well for example like this if we search for processor we'll have the, them synchronized but that's an option and from here we can pull them out if we need them 
Okay, so that's good and all, but it's kind of limited and now we have to go through all that to get one chest. So let's move on to see the real power with the ME storage. First of all, we have the storage cells. They are in they come in different sizes, 1k, 4k, 16 and 64k. And of course, the bigger they are, the more items you can store in them. But the basic one M 1k it's enough for this example at least. The only difference in crafting recipe is that the bigger ones are more advanced and require more material. But they are crafted in a very similar way, with a housing and a storage component. So let's move on to networking these. As, uh, as we had over there with the inscribers, they are all linked together, so you don't need to have you only need to connect wire at one point and then just make sure that they are all connected. And we can see here that the terminal is offline and the chests are offline and it's of course because we don't have any power. So let's place the chest and place our storage cell again. And now we can see the green LED probably is lit on all of these. And here I have a few tools and some basic basic blocks. Here I have some valuables. And I connected them to this ME terminal. The same, same terminal that we crafted earlier over there. And from here I can reach all chests. And regardless of the storage cell size, this will work. And if I take one more of these cells, this one is empty and I can switch them out. So there's this one that was used and this one is empty. So all those items will disappear. So the only way to reach them is of course to have it connected in a network. So of course this is good. We have a lot of chests, they're connected together. We can reach all items from here. And we can search for them and check recipes thanks to synchronizing with the NEI and everything. But we can improve that even further. But before we do that, we have to talk about the limitations with ME storage. Basic networks, they can hold up to eight devices and terminals are also considered device so we have four in this network if i just grab a few more let's get five more and if i connect them like this We can, we can skip that, by the way. One, two, three, four, five. And let's place these. Now we can see everything is grayed out, doesn't work. Device missing channel, it says. So this is beyond the, this tutorial. This, is on, this tutorial will only cover basic. ME networking and channels will have to be in a different video. But basically that means that to make more than eight devices work together in the same network, you need to have a more advanced network using channels. So, but if I just remove one of these, everything works again. You can, however, make one, the last one work if we just place it over here and we come connect it with fiber instead you see here if i place networking cable we still get the missing channel issue but if i remove that and i place fiber and then the glass cable 
Now we can reach all the items as before. And in this one, I can use it. I can place items in it. Forts five pieces of quartz fiber, but they can't be reached from here. If I remove all these 16, these five will still be there. That's because I'm only transferring power with the quartz fiber and not in connecting the networks together. So I can have eight devices here, connect them with quartz fiber, and have eight devices here again as a separate network, but they won't be able to talk to each other, and I can't find items between them. But this seems like a strange way to do networks, and of course there is a better way to make it compact. First, we can make an ME crafting terminal, calculation processor, an ME terminal. This will have the same functionality as the ME terminal, but we can also craft items from it. And now I place it here and I can't use it because we have too many items. So if I remove this one, and we can use the crafting terminal. And here you can see that we can craft things from here. Easy. Like that. And we can remove the old one or we can remove the new one. Oops. So, and now we move on to the ME drive. This one will have the same strength at, as the ME chests. It's just that they can hold 10 storage devices, storage cells at the same time in the same drive. So two engineering processors, our ME drive, and perhaps we should place it over here. Now we can take this one and this one and This one, I can connect the cables again, and I can. Oh, this one's empty, like that. And now I can reach all the items as I could before, but with only that one. So let's take it and place it over here instead to show you the most compact way to have your ME storage. I have an ME crafting terminal, energy cell, this is creative of course, you don't need power to make this one run. And I can just put all my items in here, and here I have all my items. Did I miss someone? Yo. Like that. Now I have all my items. It's a very good way to store all your items craft them directly in a very, very compact way. And that concludes this tutorial. And after looking at all these steps, you should be able to get all your items, get your power system working, find all the presses that you need, inscribe your your circuits and make processors, craft your storage devices and create a storage ME network. There are more things to do in ME networks, but I won't discuss them any further in this tutorial, which was more of a basic ME network tutorial with focus on getting a storage up and running. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the video comments and I'll try to answer them and help you as, as good as I can. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.